Hey peeps, we are back. We're talking The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 13, episode six. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So at the start of the episode, Dorit and Crystal stopped by Kyle's. And, you know, Kyle is showing us again that she's not a really good actress. And we're also seeing that she is not a good friend to Sutton, as if we haven't seen it since Sutton got on the show. Kyle is always smiling in Sutton's face and acting like she cares about her. She's always telling the other girls, oh, I care so much about her, while also tearing the woman down at the same time. Kyle tries to do an impersonation of Sutton and it was not very good. You are really showing us that you are not a good actress. Leave us alone with this bad acting. You're hurting your own self. Anyway, Dorit also does an impression of Sutton and I have to say that it was pretty damn good. So... I really hate that Kyle and Dorit are pushing this sudden has a drinking problem situation. I don't love it. I don't think that either one of them have the right to do that. We have not seen sudden sloppy drunk. We have not seen sudden cuss anybody's children out. We have not seen her throw drinks on anybody. I don't love this. And Crystal was absolutely right when she says, Kyle, you stopped drinking yesterday and now a set. And now all of a sudden you want to judge people on their alcohol consumption? I just don't get it. Sudden sometimes when she's drinking, she might be a little annoying, but I don't think she's drunk. You know what I mean? She's not aggressive. This is just weird. She makes that tacky comment that maybe she should talk to Sudden at 10 a.m. in the morning as if to say she starts drinking pretty early. I don't think that Sutton is an alcoholic. I think that Sutton is a social drinker. I think that Sutton also, you know, from time to time, likes a little vodka and red and ruby red grapefruit juice. And she should be able to have that if she wants it. She's not drinking and driving. We haven't seen her get a DUI like PK. So anyway, moving on. Sutton and Garcelle's friendship. I just, I love their friendship. I'm wearing Vautier and I was going for sex, sex, sex because you don't get any. Exactly. <laughs> Shut up. Are they not cute? They are so cute. Well, anyway, they get together for dinner and Sutton instantly orders her, you know, vodka and cranberry. I think she pulled her cranberry out her purse, but she also ordered bacon wrapped asparagus. And Garcelle says that Sutton cannot be a vegetarian because she is always eating bacon. Not only is she always eating bacon, remember last season when she was in the kitchen whipping up chicken salad sandwiches for her and the kids? That woman is absolutely not a vegetarian. I don't know any vegetarians that eat bacon or chicken salad sandwiches. I'm just saying. Sutton then makes another valid point when she says that Kyle loves to insert herself in the middle of Sutton's business. When Kyle tried to come over to her house to gaslight and manipulate her about the situation with her and Erica and the Magic Mike situation, Sutton was right. But Kyle did insert herself. And then Garcelle. The only time I noticed jewelry is when after the robbery, Dorit still had hers. Honey, now listen, I did not see that coming. I do know that this is definitely going to be a topic of discussion at that reunion. And you know, Dorit does seem to wear her jewelry. Now, I don't know if she claims that all of her jewelry was taken, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a whole lot of conversation at that reunion. You best believe it. Now, Sutton out here trolling the internet. She is reading all the blogs. She is trying to find out all the information she can get on Kyle in this relationship. Listen, I don't blame her because the Lord knows that if something was out there about Sutton and her ex-husband or her current boyfriend or anything like that, Kyle would absolutely be looking for it high and low so that she could share it with everybody. And then we see a little scene where Erica meets up with her new manager. She's talking to her manager and her manager's talking to her about her career. And I don't care what Erica says and I don't care how many flashbacks they show. 
of her apologizing to the group. She can say that she's changed. She's trying to do better. But the truth is, if Lisa Renner was still on this show, Erica would still be the, I don't care about anybody but me. She would still be that Erica. She is still that Erica, but right now she is trying to revamp that career and she's trying to keep the rest of these girls off her ass. So she is playing nice and plain is the word. She is playing nice. Now, Garcelle and her scene with her son, man, every time she has a scene with her kids, it gets emotional and emotional quick. She is coming through with the storylines this season, showing us the dynamics between her and her twins. And she was devastated when Jax let her know that he's known since he was eight years old that his father was out here spreading it low and wide for five years with some woman. I said, damn, that would sting. He said that at eight, he got on the internet and found all the information. That was extremely emotional. I was sad too. I said, oh gosh, but you know, the truth is she's doing the best she can. And I appreciate that he knows it's not her fault. He's grown up. He's not blaming either one of his parents, but he says he does know that his dad was wrong for what he did. I'm just happy that they had the conversation and I know that he loves her and he knows that as a mom, she's doing the best that she can. I'm telling you, these housewife shows have been really getting me emotional. First, it was a Salt Lake City had me crying about Sherry passing away. And now this, I said, oh, y'all got my blood pressure up. These housewives, oh, I remember I used to watch these for a good time. Oh, Lord, moving on. So then we see Kyle getting another tattoo. I said, oh, boy. And then they introduce us to this Morgan lady. And I said, you know, until she started hanging out, mm -hmm, dating, in my opinion, Kyle, I had no idea who this woman is. I'm assuming that she's a country and Western singer, considering that, you know, accent that she had. Um, her and Kyle are totally different. However, I did notice this lady is covered in tattoos and now Kyle is getting a whole bunch of tattoos. This lady is sober and now Kyle is sober. It's giving single white female, except for she's not single. Anyway, they can try to act like this is just a friendship, but no ma'am, no ma'am. You got that tattoo right close to your privates. Then you tattooed your initials on that woman's body. No, ma'am. I saw the giggling and the smiling and the hand holding. And then when you got home with your husband, there was no giggling, no smile, no hand holding, none of it. Okay. You and this woman, in my opinion, are definitely not just friends. No, ma'am. Then to find out that she says that Kyle stalked her online. I said, oh no, this is definitely a crush. And you turned it into a little more in my opinion. Even when she was talking to Mauricio, she said that she hadn't even finished reading his book. And I said, damn, you know, as I have always said, and I will continue to say until I get one, I don't have a husband. But if I did, I would read his book, you know, from the cover to cover. I would read it because I would want to know if he said something bad about me. Anyway. Mauricio didn't seem to be happy about this tattoo, but he's going with it. He makes a comment that he hopes that he gets to see it. And I said, oh boy, that means there is no sex. Not only that, remember when Mauricio did not know the count of how many tattoos she had? Morgan knew exactly how many. And then she said, oh, well, you said you had that many. Honey, we know, in my opinion, that you've seen them, all of them, up close. In my opinion. You know, this is all alleged. I don't know these people personally, but I definitely think they are a couple. Now, Sutton's assistant... They're over at Sutton's house that he makes a comment as if he's surprised that her dress fits. And I said, well, what does that mean? Then when the matchmaker gets there, he says, oh, the matchmaker lady is here. She's so bubbly. And he said it as if, ma'am, tone it the hell down. And you know what? I agree. That lady is extremely bubbly and she comes off fake and phony. Too much, too much bubbly. However, I do love the drink bubbly. Oh my gosh, I love bubbly. Soda water is one of my favorite drinks. It doesn't have any sugar in it, but it's got a little flavor. And if you could add a little lime, to anyway, moving on, this is not about me. And then when Dorit walks in the door, the assistant said, would you like to knock? I said, damn, this man is an absolute menace. 
I don't know why Sutton allows him to act like this. However, I'm with him. Knock on this door. Don't just walk in here, girl. Now, honey, now listen. Sutton is talking to the matchmaking lady and the lady says that she thinks that Sutton has self-awareness. Dorit says, uh, really? She said, I don't think that she's very self-aware. She's erratic, very snooty and aggressive. I said, well, shit. With friends like Dorit, you don't need no damn enemies. But, uh, listen, Sutton said, if Dorit fell in love with PK, maybe... I need to not be maybe so picky. Okay. <laughs> Sutton is killing it in these confessionals. Listen, PK is not all right with Sutton. Now you remember a couple episodes back, she said that she had heard that when PK got pulled over for that DUI that he has that Sutton does not, that there might have been a woman in the car. Well, PK post his arrest record or whatever it is. It's showing that there was no one else in the car. And then he says, at Sutton Strack, I have never said one bad word about you. So why would you make up blatant lies to boost your career? Then double down is why you're single. You ain't no Dorit love. And don't be so picky. Honey, listen. <laughs> I am pretty sure that Sutton is glad that she is not Dorit. So she didn't have to deal with yo ass because you don't have as much money as her ex-husband or as much as she's got. I, I don't know why I said that. That's rude. Moving on. Then she had the nerve to make fun of one of the men's outfits, talking about a black tie and a black suit and a black shirt or something. She didn't appreciate something. Black suit, black shirt. And the lady said, well, imagine if somebody judged you on what you chose to wear. I said, shit, don't we all judge Sutton on them damn outfits, especially her first season. Her first season and all that Dolce and Cabana, this is Couture, all that stuff looked ridiculous. And then they brought up that cat shirt. That cat shirt is a little ridiculous for a first date, but I thought it was cute. If somebody bought me a cat shirt, I'd wear it. Anyway, then we see the girls getting all dressed up and ready to go to Kyle's event. And Garcelle is being funny in her makeup chair. And she says, I'm going to need to take some pictures up against the window like this. Who am I? And her glam squad said, Dorit. I said, everybody knows that. I mean, one day I'm going to do that just for the hell of it. So we finally get to meet Anne Marie and the jury is still out on her. I don't know if I'm going to like her at all. I really don't. Um, she was just getting a little bit too involved at the dinner and I'm not a fan so far, but you never know by the end of this, I may like her. I'm not sure. So Kyle was downloading Fane Resnick and her friend Justin about Sutton's comment about her working out and eating healthy. And when they, and, and right at that moment, Garcelle and Sutton walk in and Garcelle says, it's so quiet in here. What did we walk in on? I said, them talking shit about your friend Sutton. But they didn't say much. When Sutton was introduced to Anne Marie, this woman, I tell you, Sutton is really doing too damn much. She says, oh, when I see Anne Marie wearing a dress that's all tulle, I said to myself, I've seen that dress somewhere. Oh, Erica was wearing that dress in pink when she was playing Barbie. They still making that dress. Now listen, Erica was wearing that dress in 2021 because the the producers wanted to be shady and let us know. And Anne Marie is wearing this dress. Listen, I, I don't even know. I have a feeling that Anne Marie and Sutton are not going to get along this season. Crystal also says that Anne Marie asked a lot of questions and she's extremely nosy. Her actual quote was, that bitch is nosy. So uh, maybe Crystal and Anne Marie might not be getting along this season either. We'll have to see. Then lo and behold, Denise Richards and Camille. And you know what? It used to be Camille Grammer, but she's married to somebody else. This woman is always going to be Camille Grammer to me. I really do think that they need to add Camille and Denise back. They do bring a little something, even though I thought that Denise is on something. You know, she says she doesn't do the THC and she doesn't smoke the weed. Maybe not. But in my opinion, she popped something. She drank something. She did something. I'm going to blame it on the goose because that woman was, she was acting weird. She was, something was wrong. Allegedly, allegedly. Anyway, they did a flashback of that psychic Allison from Camille's party. 
And she told Kyle that Mauricio will never emotionally feel her. And as soon as the children are bigger, they will have nothing in common. I said, oh, damn, damn, damn. Allison didn't put no date on it, but uh, I think Allison might have been right. Then they get down to sitting at the tables. And for some reason, Kyle puts Faye Resnick right across from Camille. Camille says, oh, God, I'm right across from Faye. Faye sees that she's sitting right across from Camille. She needs to move her seat. I said, both of y'all are too damn grown. Y'all are big grown. You can't just sit across from each other and just not talk. Enjoy your food and talk to others around you. That was just trash. That was just ridiculous. Cynthia was there, but she wasn't doing much or saying much. But it was nice to see Cynthia in the house. So Sutton and Kyle sit down and have a little conversation off to the side in private. And Sutton tells Kyle that she's sorry that she was acting weird. She's going through something with her husband, her ex-husband. He got some sort of huge promotion and he's moving to London. And he told her that she too was moving to London with his son. And that made Sutton very unhappy. Now we all know that Sutton is really tired of being controlled by her ex-husband. She wants to stand up and be successful on her own. And she also wants to be calling her shots herself. So she was really emotional about this. And, um, Kyle tells her, she says, well, you're divorced. He can't tell you what to do. And she says, yeah, that's true. But he's got so much money and he's got so much power. He is, you know, powerful worldwide. He doesn't just sell houses. And I thought that was low blow. It really was. Mauricio is an, is a working man. And for the most part, he's an honest working man. You know, there's stuff out in the blogs. But don't put this man down. Don't knock his hustle because he's taking care of his family pretty damn good, if you ask me. I thought that was a little low. She then tells Kyle that she doesn't have to worry about it. She's not going to London and neither is her son. However, she will have to deal with her child support being increased. And when she first said that, I didn't get it either. I said, what's there to deal with it? I mean, you already told us you're getting $300,000 after taxes for spousal support. And I wouldn't complain about an increase in my child support. But then she says it's not that she was complaining about dealing with the increase of the child support. She has to deal with the legal team regarding getting an increase in her child support. So that made a little more sense. However, the problems just kept coming because Kyle says, you know, she's not really buying this shit. She don't really care. This is not a big deal. And I'm paraphrasing. And Sutton was really angry about this. Sutton said that she expected Kyle to understand what she was going through. And, you know, Kyle is thinking, girl, please, there are so many other things going on in life. And you're complaining about the fact that you are not moving to London and you're getting an increase on your child support. And Kyle says, everything is such a big deal to you. Like the time that Dorit was robbed and I brought it up to you and you all of a sudden was just so worried about your fashion designer not being able to make it in from Paris. I remember that too. I was a little thrown aback by that too. I said, how the hell are you comparing the two? But anyway, Kyle says that Sutton is out of touch. Sutton thinks that Kyle is also out of touch. I think both of them are out of touch from time to time and they both should just shut the hell up. The conversation is not going anywhere. You got a whole bunch of people in your house waiting for the THC food and they're starving. Okay, just get on out of here and sit on down. When Sutton comes back to the table, Erica says, well, where's our hostess? Sutton says, in denial somewhere. I said, oh, shit. Sutton, uh, listen, Sutton said Kyle is going to work this year. She is not about to get the first seat and not do shit to deserve it. She is going to put in some effort. Now, honey, when they're talking to the weed chef, the weed chef is busy trying to tell them about the menu. And Kyle is so busy trying to talk to Dorit and Erica under her breath, calling Sutton a bitch. I said, as if Sutton and everybody else at the table are not watching you, we can read lips. Everybody can read the word bitch on somebody's lips. Now, Denise says out front, she's not going to be doing any of this THC food. She doesn't do it. And I'm with her. You know, everybody can get the percentage of THC in their food that they want from none to 10, I guess. And I honestly would say zero because I've never done anything. I've never smoked anything. I never took anything. And I think that if I tried something, 
I would be loopy and I just don't even like to feel weird. So I would have said no. But most of the girls got 5%, 3% or no percent. Garcelle told them if she gets any THC and gets high, she's going to sue them. I said, oh shit. <laughs> Let me tell you, my, my girlfriends, they would have probably said, we'll take the 10. And then I would have definitely been the safe driver home. Anyway, moving on. So then they have the big confrontation when Garcelle said I'm not here fooling around about any of this let's talk about that marriage let's talk about that ring what is going on what are you hiding is there something going on in your personal life that you would like to share with what though like what your marriage really yes what's with the new band that's what she wants to know no There's I want to know band? what's with the new wedding band You haven't been wearing your wedding ring. Well, you know, all of these things kind of add up. Yes. I thought it was a, a makeup band. A well, we makeup band? What does that mean? When your husband messes up and you get a gift, I have a diamond cross. Oh, oh my God. I used to get cards. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? You got cards. Okay. I got an ask for oh, every time they like, oh, what? It seems so inappropriate. Who said that? Oh, inappropriate. Be asking. I can't believe you have the guts to say that to me when you don't eat. I mean, I have not said anything before, but if she's going to make comments about my eating and working out and not drinking, don't make me go there. Sutton literally just pushes her food around the plate like my kids would do when they wanted to think you were eating your vegetables. Those potatoes just move from the left to the right. I really didn't like that Kyle was trying to act victimized. You know, Kyle has asked every last woman on the show the hard questions about their personal business. She has grilled them. She didn't care if they were struggling. She has always told them, be open, be honest, you know. And now all of a sudden, because she's got some stuff going on, she expects them to just say, oh, well, it's Kyle. Leave her alone. Let's give her a pass. No, you get a check just like the rest of them. And they have to share. You're on their ass constantly for them to share. So now it's your turn. Share with us. And you know, at some point, not only in this episode did Kyle try to call Sutton an alcoholic, then she brought up that Sutton may possibly have an eating disorder. And I just think that she is doing too much. I mean, Kyle, we've heard about your eating disorder. We heard about Crystal's eating disorder. Crystal is right there at the table as well. You can't do this. This is disgusting. And this is really dangerous for you to throw these accusations that she's an alcoholic and a, uh, and she's got an eating disorder. You are not the victim here. You are trying to gaslight the shit out of Sutton and you're deflecting. I mean, remember that season, the last season Denise was on and Kyle kept digging into the rumors that Denise had something going on with Brandy Glanville and she just kept going and kept going. And then they kept on asking Denise all these questions. Denise was screaming, bravo, bravo, bravo. She kept telling them she didn't want to talk about it, but they were all there ganging up on her. By they, I mean Kyle, Erica, and Lisa. Kyle is always telling them, be authentic, you know, answer the questions. Well, you go ahead and answer the questions. What the hell is going on in you and Mauricio's home? What is happening with you and Morgan? Why is your initials tattooed on this woman? I did laugh a little bit when Camille mentioned that when um, Kelsey cheated on her as a makeup, he bought her an Aston Martin. I said, that's a real nice makeup. Let me just say that. At BravoCon, Garcelle even said it. She said that Kyle and Dorit protect each other and their personal lives on camera and they expect Sutton and her to do the same but they don't protect Sutton and Garcelle so no ma'am I agree if you're not willing to protect me and my business on camera I'm sure as hell not going to protect you and yours and I do think that Kyle has every right to stop drinking she has every right to eat healthy and exercise and she has every right to get tattoos I don't think that people should judge her based on her tattoos and her eating and all that stuff. But if you are going to ask them to dig into the deepest parts of their relationships and their situations, like last season when Sutton mentioned her several miscarriages and you threw that woman under the bus and acted like she was lying, you tap danced all over that woman's emotions. This is not fair. Share your shit too. 
I think that it's really disgusting because Kyle knows that her sister had a drinking problem. Kyle has an eating disorder. Crystal has an eating disorder. PK had a DUI, but you want to treat Sutton crazy. Last season, y'all didn't want anybody to say one thing about Erica's acting erratic, heavily drinking and taking medication. Remember when Kyle kept questioning Camille about her marriage being over? So what's happening in your marriage? I heard in the tabloids. Remember? Come on now, Kyle. Anyway, did anybody notice the look on Erica's face when Faye made that sound effect? She was like, oh. Erica turned around like, bitch, please. And Garcelle said, who said that? I said, oh my God, these ladies are killing it this season. They are all clocked in and they are engaged. Anyway, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.